Hello and welcome back to The Native Drum. I am your host, Sean Littlebear. Today we will be exploring um, a 20 inch white cowhide drum and we are going to do a northern style uh, tie where we will actually finish what was actually started. Uh, you tie the drum normally and then this lace, once the hide is stretched over the frame, uh, this lace is cut out and then you retie just the handle part to make um, a functioning handle. And you can use geometric patterns and you can do a lot more with it because you don't have to worry about the hide uh, stretching or warping or whatever because it's already dry and it's already done that. So this is what we're going to do this episode. We're going to show how we can actually make a, it's not really a northern style, it's the way the northerns like to tie their drums. So that's what we will be doing today and I will show you, I have the lace, uh, it's cut and ready to go. The frame and the skin has already been uh, traditionally taken care of. I will show you how this um, metal ring is a temporary uh, device that I, I like to use. I used to use a rawhide round, but it would always warp. So these metal rings don't move and they hold their shape well. Um, I just picked some up at the hardware store. You can buy them in silver or, or brass. And <clears throat> your lace, when you tie from one side to the other, um, you don't have to go all the way across and then come back. What you can do is just go to the ring and then come back. So you don't, you, you don't waste as much lace. And this lace is on there to make the drum nice and tight. And once it's served its function, we can cut it off and then we can do our handle. So we won't use this ring. We're going to actually make a handle out of this uh, rawhide. And it will look somewhat like, like this one. Uh, this was in a natural. Um, and this one's in a cream color, um, but it will, it will actually look more like this without the metal ring. So we're just going to make the cross in the middle and then tie it out of um, some natural elk hide. So once we get to doing that, um, I have marked the places where I want the, the cross to go. So. I have some tape here that I use on the little drumsticks and they come in all different colors. It doesn't really matter what, co what color you use. Um, once the hide is dry, it's not going to hurt it to put a, a little temporary piece on it. So that's what these are for, uh, just to show where I want the crosses to go. Uh, normally you do between the two holes, the two sets. Uh, but since this hide kind of, it had a mind of its own and it decided it wanted to pull and push, um, I tried to work with it and in the end it just did what it wanted to. So, and sometimes that's the way it goes. So you, as, as a drum maker or as you are doing your project, you kind of have to work with it. Um, I did the holes the exact same way that I normally do. This is only a, a bigger one from from the 15 inch, this is up to a 20. So instead of making more holes, I just stuck with the 16 and this is the way it came out. So we're gonna use a few of the little tricks to the trade and I will show you as I go along how we're gonna do that. So I have my lace cut and it has the little hole in it at one end and I have two, actually two pieces and I'll show you what uh, the shorter pieces for. I'm probably going to have to cut it up as we go. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to tie this drum that is already, it's dried, it's ready to go, but it doesn't have the handle we want. So now we are going to take this metal ring out and we're going to cut this lace off and then we're going to proceed to make our new handle for our 20 inch cream colored white cowhide drum. Okay, now we're going to actually cut this lace off. 
um, when you're when you're actually going to do it for the for the first time, what you want to do is feel your lace and see which is the tighter part and which is the looser part. You want to start with the ones that are actually looser because they don't hold as much energy uh, pulling on the the rim and the hide and the eyelets. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use these uh, short, these actually are tin snips and they work really well for rawhide. And I'm going to start over here where one of the laces is just a little bit loose. And I found as I've been doing this that it, it helps to cut it about two thirds of the way out from the center ring. So we're going to start with doing that. And if, if cutting a piece of lace tightens the drum in another area, you want to keep track of that. So we just want to work our way around and see that that made the, the hide shift just a hair. So it'll tighten and loosen different ones as you go along. There we go. There's the center piece. And we want to take this piece and we can reuse the ring, but the other pieces we're not going to reuse. So those are, are going to be thrown out. And then we'll just unthread all of the pieces and we'll use this ring on another, um, another job. So on, on this ring part, um, what I like to do is find a piece and work it through just a little bit, uh, either one way or the other, and then snip right at the hinge point. And then both sides will come out evenly. That way you don't mark up your, your drum. And then you just pull the other part out, like so. And that causes less stress on the eyelet. Now, when we're going to retie the, the hide, what we want to do is we want to make a point where we're going to anchor our new handle. And again, we're going to flex on these little eyelets and we're going to find one that is relatively stiff. And it's usually in the thickest part. So this one seems really, really, either one of these two seem a little bit less flexible. So we may go ahead and use one of these two as our anchor point. So we'll keep that in mind as we go around. We've got the crosses marked. So we'll say on this side, we'll, we'll anchor and then we'll start stretching our rawhide. If you can pull it all the way through, on some of the thinner ones, you can tell there's a, a, um, a thinner side and a thicker side. Sometimes you can just thread those through and they'll come right out. We just cut the lace off. So now the center piece is off. Um, we've, we've marked where we want our, our cross to be uh, with some temporary tape and we're going to we're going to go into the lacing part here in just a minute. Um, I wanted to point out that the difference between a white uh, cowhide or elk hide or any kind of uh, raw hide that you buy, um, there are different types of uh, what is considered white. Uh, whenever you buy a bleached hide, it's different than a hide that is uh, chemically whitened, whitened. So if you look, this drum is actually a, what is called a natural bleach. Um, it, it has a lot of, uh, still has a lot of character in it and it has a lot of color that is actually built into the skin. Um, this kind of drum um, doesn't actually get all the way white you still have some color, you still have some character to it. 
So this is what is considered a natural bleach. Uh, this one, on the other hand, is a, it is called a cream cowhide. And what the cream does is it, it's not just bleached, it's actually they, they add a chemical that is actually in leather coloring, uh, much like doing a, uh, a pair of athletic shoes. Um, you'd have a white chemical that's added to it to make it white. So it goes into the skin and it permeates through the whole skin. But you still notice on the finished side that even though it's been chemically treated, uh, there's still some areas where the cowhide still has a little character to it. So when you're doing a, um, a hide, just know that if you want the cream, it's going to be a little more expensive than, say, a natural bleached hide or a natural raw hide. It's usually um, a few bucks more. So we like to keep that in mind as we make a drum. Sometimes when you're making a drum just for artwork, uh, a cream hide works really well because you can get colors to, to stand out. So this is going to be our, let's see, our beginning point over here. So we'll start lacing from here and we're going to lace through the eyelets and then we're going to try to make our handle where, the, where our marks are. And hopefully if we've done it right, uh, this is kind of an experiment for me too. Um, I've done the, the smaller ones, but I, I haven't done one this big. So we're going we're gonna to attempt that now. <laughs> so now we'll go ahead and start on our lace for our, for our drum. Um, again, we don't need to wet it. It's nice and dry. So the eyelets are, are ready. Um, I've pre-cut the lace. So what I'm going to do is take it out of the water. And just pat it dry just a little bit so it won't drip as much. And on this part, I've already made the little hole. I folded it over and snipped it with the scissors. So all I need to worry about is keeping it untangled. And there should be enough here to do the handle with. So we want to go all the way through it, make sure there's not a knot. And then this is the, the starting point. It has a little point and this piece has the little hole in the end. That way we can lace off our starting point and it looks like it's going to be this one. So we'll put this through. This is where the tools come in handy. And we'll anchor this eyelet with the lace and then we'll start going uh, straight across and then again like the other drums that we tied you want to be consistent. If you're going to go counterclockwise and start that direction then go counterclockwise. If you're going to go clockwise then stick with clockwise. So now that we have our anchor in, okay. we're going to go across to this set from, from here. Just making sure that you don't get all tangled up or make a knot. And 
this is where you have to be patient with it. You want to keep in mind that there's going to be little pieces, there's going to be dust, there's going to be things you encounter along the way, and sometimes once you stretch this kind of lacing, it can get a little thin in spots. So you just want to keep that in mind as you go through your, your lacing process. Okay, that's all the eyelets. At this point, once you've hit all the eyelets, you want to make sure that you're not really worried about the tightness. You just want to make sure that all the eyelets are hit exactly the way that you want them. They're all the way through, and sometimes if you miss, uh, you need to go back and, and redo those. Once that is done, then you can take what little lace you have and tie a temporary knot right where you end up. And it's usually right next to your anchor point. And at this point is where you begin taking up the slack. But you don't do it all at once. It's kind of a, you want to do it in step stages. We're not looking for a real tight lacing pattern at this point. And you don't really worry about the center point either. You want to make, have the lace go straight across. And then once we start doing the handle, then we'll worry about the centering and the crosses and that kind of thing. At this point, don't worry about it being off center a little bit. It doesn't, that doesn't even come into play right now. What we want to do is make sure that whenever we start stretching, you need to watch the thinner points of where your hide is. Um, sometimes you'll have pieces come up and you'll need to go through and trim those off. You also might have a thicker part, like this part. If you want to trim that, that would be okay, but then again, if, if that point really stretches, um, I like to leave those on there, just in case. So, once you get to this point, um, we're, we're, again, we're going to step up the stretch just a little bit more, not really tight. We're going to go back and take out a little more slack. And that should be about enough right there. So what we'll do after we do this one, we will actually start tying the cross and getting everything centered. So after this time tightening, um, we'll start doing the cross, which actually tightens it up even more. Now that we have this uh, tightened a little bit more, um, you don't want to have it real tight because in order to tie the handle, uh, you're going to need a little bit of looseness that you can, you can pull together. So we've tightened it twice around and it's looking pretty good. At this point is where you need to kind of center where you want this. Right now the center's right here. Uh, we need to move just a little bit more this way. So we're going to keep that in mind as we start making our handle. So these two go straight across between the two. So we're going to start with these two first. Okay, when you start doing, you, you start gathering your, your handle um, what you want to do is keep in mind where you marked for the cross um, and then your first gathers are going to be just off center this way. So these four are where I want to start with, gathering these four. So in order to center those, you want to put, um, you want to put your lace up and around and then start about where the center point is going to be on the drum. Again, if you measure from like right here to right here, you've got it about the same. From here to there. Okay, do you see that? We're about an inch 
on the bark of my stick from here, which is where we want to go out from. And then we want to start over here and then go out toward this part. So that's about where the center point is going to be. And if you look um, there, there's about an inch. Over here, that's about an inch. That's about an inch. And then that's about an inch. So we're pretty much centered. Now what we want to do is now that we have kind of gathered our center point, um, we want to be careful and not do it real tight, but we want to come around and I'm doing this, as you notice, I'm, I'm going to wrap around clockwise. I'm not going to worry about this one under. That's part of another gather. So as I go up and around, I'm watching this to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't push or it doesn't pull too much. Because if the whole thing moves, then you're going to have to go back and recenter. Now, if it's, if, it, if it's actually starting to point a little more this way or a little more this way, then what you do is you, you pull it a little more or you let it loose to, to go more that way. So that's the way you adjust this. And you always keep in mind that this, this lace around here is actually going to cinch up on your rawhide so that when, you, when it starts to dry, it's actually gonna, gonna get a little bit tighter and it's gonna gather those, these four together real tight in a bundle. Okay, all I wanna do is get about, about two inches um, on the handle. And now we're gonna come to the other side and we're gonna work on these four. The thing is, I wanted to pull this a little bit this way so, it'll, so that the cross would be straight across but actually not right in the middle. I want to pull it just a little bit. So what I did was I, I spun it clockwise on this side and on the other side I'm going to do counterclockwise. Now again you want to be careful to make sure that this where your center point is doesn't push out or pull in. The other one went clockwise in my direction as I'm looking toward the center it went clockwise, this one's going to go counterclockwise to try and keep that centered. And we're going to go under again for the last four gathers. Uh, we've got our center point where we want it to go. Um, we've got the, our cross that's building. This still has to be gathered in, so once we have our center point, we've got to kind of stick with it. We can't really change that. So we just want to make sure that it stays where it's at. And then hopefully the lace will gather and tighten and it'll set back straight where it was supposed to go. Now we have our cross in the middle. And at this point, it's, it's still wet. So the center point is done. Uh, the cross really wasn't centered on these two points, it was centered from here. What we're going to do is, because each of these have two, uh, I'm going to come around back to here where I anchored our anchored lace to start out with. Um, I'm going to wrap around the anchor point and then tie off right here where the first tie was. So there will only be one knot to start and finish. It'll look like there's only one knot. So here we have our 20 inch drum. Again, it's already dried. We just need to wait uh, for the center part to dry and it'll dry out over the next two, three days. And as we watch it, uh, we can rub on some white to make it, to lighten it up a little bit. So even though we have wet lace on here, we can actually, um, still actually get a nice tone out of the drum and it will go a little bit higher when you when the lace is all dry so it, it'll get a little bit higher pitched there you have it and we will explore more ties on the next show and subsequent shows so we will get to those and we're going to do more on drumsticks and the drum stands 
and maybe a couple more powwow drums in different, different styles and sizes. So I am your host, Sean Little Bear. It has been wonderful for you to join me. We appreciate your viewing and all of you viewers out there, we are so grateful that you've, you've given us the thumbs up and you want more episodes. So we'll try to bring you more. I thank you for joining me today. Aho from the Native Drum. Thank you. I believe in an afterlife after we're gone here, that we're going to go and we're going to see all of our relatives. I hope to see all, how all those Indians, my people, lived a long time ago, how they dressed. But all these things that God made, he made all my nephews here love this drum here. This is our life. It, this has always been my life. But all these boys here, if you start a song, they don't, they don't know, by golly, the second push-up, they'll be singing with you. I can guarantee you that. I've heard them hundreds and hundreds of times learning a new song. They never heard the second push-up, they'd be singing right along with them. A lot of guys can't do that. <clears throat> but our parents taught us how, how to do that. And when you come around a song, you, 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 you sing good songs in a good way. You smile and tell stories around the drum. And make them dancers feel good. Make them old people feel good that they can't dance. So this, this song here I, I put together, not knowing I, I was really putting a song together. And we call it Don't Forget the Old Song. Don't go ahead, dog, yeah, four about dog, yeah. On day on day by on, man. Boy by boy, they talk. Those old songs. It's wonderful that y'all made all of them. So don't forget these old songs that they made. Boy by boy, they talk.